o'clock, we do have a quorum, so I call the meeting to order. Would everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Mary, may we have the roll call, please? Yes, sir. Chief Newby? Here. Here. Mr. Clark. Here. Mr. Depp. Here. Ms. Harrison. Here. Ms. Hurd. Here. Ms. Jones. Here. Ms. Simpson. Mr. Williamson. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, first order of business is approval of minutes from the December the 4th, 2012 uh, meeting. Can I have a motion for that, please? So moved. Second. Larry and Sharon, any discussion on the motion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Motion carried. Mark, you have an item here, uh, United um, Way Cam recognition. Would you like to hand it back? I'd like to just uh, hand it directly off to Mr. Napier, who uh, was our one of our co-chairs for this year's United Way campaign, and he's got some other introductions we want to It's on the bottom. <laughs> Test. Okay, there we go. Thanks a lot, Mark. We, uh, I want to introduce the United Way campaign for RTA this year. The 2012 campaign uh, was a huge success. And so without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and ask Michelle Wilkinson to come up. She was one of our committee co-chairs. And Ms. Karen Giles. I was joking, in years past, we've had a little larger United Way committee, so this is sort of our uh, committee on steroids. We actually had, uh, not with us today, is Barbara Brookshire. She did a lot of the cooking for our breakfast, kickoff breakfast, and our employee outreach uh, events. And then Stacy Benson-Taylor from Ashme was also a part of our committee, and um, we're really excited about what we accomplished this past year. And uh, let me go ahead and get the United Way folks up here. And uh, they may want to have, they may want to say a couple of things. While they're making their way up here, I just want to say thanks to the great employees here at RTA who were so generous with their time and their money. Uh, they really get the big picture and, and understand the need out here in our community. And again, thanks to the committee they simply needed a champion, someone to say, we can do it. And then they actually did the work. So I'm tremendously proud of them. And last but not least, thanks to Mark Donaghy and his leadership. And really uh, what this group has shown is when we get behind something as a team, we can achieve anything. So I just really wanna, wanna thank them very much. And without uh, further ado, I'll go ahead and turn this over. Okay, thank you, Jim. Um, my name is Tom Maltzby, I'm President and CEO of Grady Dayton United Way. United Way of Grady Dayton area, I should say. And uh, I just want to express my two favorite words to organizations like RTA, and that's thank you. Uh, they ran one heck of a campaign, um, as you've heard, uh, but it wasn't just a campaign. Um, I went to the pizza parties and, um, and, and stopped in from time to time, and I saw the enthusiasm uh, we appreciate the opportunity to get to know your people during the campaign. We don't often get that, uh, but we did it United Way, and it made a significant difference um, in terms of the way people contributed, the way they gave, um, and, and the results uh, that they got. And, and to, to the ladies, I mean, you, you all were wonderful. I mean, they, they treated me like I worked there. And uh, so it, it was just a wonderful campaign, <laughs> significant results, and again, uh, to everyone involved, uh, because it takes uh, leadership, um, it, it takes um, uh, people who, who work, uh, who do all the work, and it takes um, the, the people who support them to make a, a great United Way campaign. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you again. Uh, my name is Rick Tincher. I'm a labor liaison at Greater Dayton United Way. I've uh, been working with the RTA campaign for the last four years. 
Uh, this year was a fantastic effort by the board and their support. Without them, and we understand it all drifts down a little bit, so with the great support of the board here at RTA, and the great, and I'm going to use a little coaching here, this is the coaching staff right here, and our players are down there in their garage driving those buses and keeping those buses running. So I hope that next year that this is the same staff that we have. <laughs> <laughs> because I want to tell you a little bit about the results, just a little bit. I don't have it exactly to the penny. Uh, but the campaign was 100% improvement over last year in dollars. Okay, somewhere of uh, $30,000. Great job. So, to the GM staff back here, the coaching staff needs to stay intact. I'm going to say it again. And anticipation, and that's something that we're here at United Way is really getting involved in is it's anticipation. Uh, to make our community better, uh, you got to be a player. And uh, so players are anticipation. So we went for not only 100% anticipation in dollars, but our anticipation went up about 160%. Think about that, 160% of our workers at RTA uh, got the message. They wanted to get involved in their community and wanted to give, a, give back. And that's what the United Way campaign is, is getting involved and finding a way to help our community. And this is the, the highest percentage of the campaign that I've had this year is here at RTA with a percentage anticipation. Again, thank you very much. So with that, I'm going to give it back to Jim. But I really hope that this Super Bowl team <laughs> is going to repeat these percentages for next year because we got a challenge. And uh, ain't nobody can do what we did. We can only do it better. So again, I am looking forward to next year, looking for some things in the summer. I want to come back and help with any of your things going on. I want to be part of your family and, uh, and working with the membership. And anything we can do at United Way, you let us know. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Rick. And I, I didn't want to overlook Rick, but I saved him to the last. When we said be at the garage at 3 o'clock in the morning to start making pancakes and, and those kinds of things, he was there at 2.45. When we said meet us in the maintenance area at 10 o'clock at night, he was there at 9.30. So, it's a 10 minute window. Yeah. <laughs> so, we, we do appreciate you standing elbow to elbow with us, Rick and, and Tom. And, and that was a pleasure and a, and a lot of fun doing it. Thank you. Thank you. One more thing we are a team. And on the board, with your support with this year's campaign, I have United Way Live United t shirts for each and every one of you. And I have a little United Way sticker that you can put on your badge and wear all summer long. So, I'm going to leave that with uh, somebody that Jim tells me to leave it with here today. <laughs> so, but we do have shirts for everybody. Thank you. And you know, we can't say enough, Jim talks about leadership. Michelle and Karen are officers in the Amalgamated Transit Union. So they're leaders in their own right uh, within the rank and file. And when, you know, they talk about how do you get results, uh, you know, we have 640 some employees this week. Over 500 of those are represented by unions. So if we don't if we don't get the rank and file support, you know we're just not going to have a good year. And so it's an incredible key to have the right people involved. And Michelle's already committed because she's got ideas for next year. She was just telling me about it. So uh, we now have her on video as being committed to do next year. So we got to just get Karen and Jim on board, and we got this thing done. Thank you all so much. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, Rick, thank you very much for coming down. We uh, certainly appreciate it. And uh, to Michelle and Karen, it sounds like you've already been drafted for next year. It's, it's old saying you do a good job, look what happens. <laughs> there again, thanks so on behalf of the board for all the work that you've done. It's, uh, I agree with uh, Mark having participated in the past in campaigns. And if you don't get the rank and file and uh, the union involved, your chances of success are almost zero. So certainly appreciate all the effort that you put into it. Okay, before proceeding on with the um, regular agenda, a couple comments I wanted to make. Um, this being the first meeting of the year seemed like a good time to do it. And that's just to take a minute or two to talk about the overall structure of the RTA board and how we operate. This came up uh, last month amongst the uh, board members, and, and we were talking about every month this particular meeting is telecast, and some people watch it. Had many people over the years stop and say something about having seen it on television. 
And we got to thinking that perhaps it could be a little bit confusing if they don't understand the background which takes place. So just a minute or two to explain that. We normally have the uh, board meeting, the meeting here today, the first Tuesday of the month uh, at 3 o'clock, this being um, a holiday on the first Tuesday this month, being uh, uh, the first of the month. We moved it up to Thursday, but generally speaking, it would be on the first. But prior to this taking place, the preceding month, on the third Tuesday of the month at, at 9 o'clock, the board, along with a, a good per, a portion of the staff, the RTA, meet in the same room. And we take every item which you will hear on the agenda, which we will be approving today, and we tear into that in detail. And we start out usually with the Finance Committee, Finance and Personnel. Uh, Ms. Adrian Hurd is chair of that committee. And you will hear, as again today, you'll hear various different major purchase orders coming through. And they usually go sailing right straight through, and somebody said, well, do you people pay any attention to those? Believe me, we do. If you were to attend one of our committee meetings on the third uh, Tuesday month, which are open to the public, you'd find that we sometimes spend, I've seen times, we spend over half an hour on one item. And we will tear that item apart. Is it really needed for the RTA? Have we received the best price? And one thing that the members of the board are really concerned about, if we're purchasing this from someplace out of the Dayton area, was there any possibility we could have purchased the same item locally? And I will say this, the staff does a tremendous job, but we go through those every month making sure that these things are taken care of. So that, that's a major portion of that meeting which takes place, like I said, um, every month. It's a, usually a two to two and a half hour meeting. It's a fairly lengthy, very intensive meeting. The second, by the way, we have two major committees on the RTA, the planning and per, or the finance and personnel, which I've already mentioned, and the second is the planning committee. The planning committee usually deals with long-range matters. Uh, some of the things in the past, when we built the new uh, transit center at the back of this building here, it was the planning committee which handled that. If we're making major changes in the route structure, either adding routes, and which fortunately we have not had to do for several years, taking away any routes, sometimes we talk about adding service to given routes, things of that nature, generally speaking, go through the planning committee. If there's no major issues on the agenda we anymore, we usually have both of the committees meet combined. And there again, that is the third Tuesday of the month at 9 o'clock in this room. The uh, purpose of meeting combined is save staff time. Uh, staff doesn't have to attend two separate meetings, and they can get back to their normal work. And on top of that, it enables everybody on the board to be familiar with everything that's taking place at the RTA. We do have a third committee, uh, Investment Advisory Committee, it only meets quarterly. This committee is comprised of some board members as well as some outside folks, as well as a consultant that we hire to advise us on the, uh, the economics and on finance and on something you hear us speak about quite often up here is fuel hedging. At the RTA, as the years go by, every so often we have to buy buses. I don't need to tell you these things are horribly expensive. In order to do that, Every year we need to operate in the black and we need to take the money that we save and invest that and hope we get the best return for the dollar, which in this economy is difficult to do. But we get outside information on how the best place is to, to invest that so that when the time comes to buy new buses, we have the money to do so. If we didn't take that steps or those steps, save that money and invest it wisely, we'd reach the point down the road somewhere where we'd go to say we need new buses because the old ones are junk and we wouldn't have no money to buy them. It's a very critical thing. The other point I mentioned that they do is fuel hedging. We try to see what the price of fuel is at any given time, and we're able to buy that in the future. Uh, like right now, we're already purchasing fuel for 2014. And uh, the point being is when the price of fuel is down, like right now, then we're buying fuel for delivery year, year and a half in advance. And as a result, we're able to save uh, any given year. I suspect we had a pretty good year this year, didn't we, Mark, in terms of, uh, yeah. or I might ask Larry, Larry chairs that committee, Larry Clark. Um, but we should have had a pretty good year this year as a result of doing the fuel hedging. So that's the third committee. It's, it's not a standing regular committee that meets monthly. Like I said, it meets quarterly. As a matter of fact, it will meet this month on January the 17th, there again in this particular room here. So that was just a quick synopsis of how we work. Um, I repeat again, when you hear these various purchasing orders and so forth going through, 
at the regular board meeting. There's a tremendous amount of work and background that went into this, including the board going over each and every one of these particular purchase items. So with that, I would turn it over to the one of the committees I spoke of, the Finance and Personnel Committee, chaired by Adrian Hurd. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the Finance, Personnel, and the Planning Committees met on December 18th. As a result of this meeting and the thorough discussions, we, the Finance and Personnel Committee is recommending five action items for approval. First action item, which is action item number two, is the 2013 operating and capital budgets. The greater Dayton RTA's operating revenues for 2013 are projected at $64.5 million, while operating expenses are projected at $58.5 million. This budget scenario reflects a gain of $6 million before local capital charges and a surplus of $3.5 million after local capital charges. <laughs> The significant increase in sales tax collections over the past two years has had a very positive effect on operating results and it has significantly impacted the five-year planning window. On the capital side, expenditures for 2013 are projected at $19.2 million with $15.5 million funded from federal and other local sources. The total cash reserves are projected to be $40.5 million at December 31st, 2013. And as we look to the future, it is important to emphasize that over the five-year capital budget planning horizon, 45 dual-mode electric trolley buses will be purchased at a total cost of $47.3 million. Approximately $9.5 million of cash reserves are required to purchase these 45 electric trolley buses. Uh, Mary Stanford presented the 2013 final operating and capital budgets at our meeting, and she's available today to answer any questions that the board may have. Based on the recommendations from the Finance and Personnel Committee, I move that the Board of Trustees adopt the fiscal year 2013 operating and capital budgets. I also, based on their recommendation, um, move that we approve the revised fleet plan as included in the board package. Approval of the operating and capital budgets will allow the Secretary Treasurer to file the appropriate documents with the Montgomery County Auditor during January 2013 in order to receive a certificate authorizing expenditures. Okay, a motion by Adrian. Do I have a second, please? Second. Second by Larry. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Action item number two is approved. Action item three was the 2013 annual appropriations. The trustees' adoption of the fiscal year 2013 operating capital budgets has established the budget limits for the upcoming year. The trustees' approval of resolution 2013-1-1 will appropriate the needed funds to carry out the activities that were approved in the budget document. Mary Stanford provided a detailed explanation at our committee meeting, and the supporting information is included in our board package today. Again, Mary, Ms. Stanford is available to answer any questions that the board may have at this time. Based on the recommendations from the Finance and Personnel Committee, I move that the Board of Trustees approve Resolution 2013-1-1, which is the fiscal year 2013 annual appropriations. Okay, motion by Adrian. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Sharon. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Action item number four, which is the uh, 2013 professional expenditures. This resolution authorizes the executive director to commit and pay routine expenditures within appropriation limits for professional services, including legal services, temporary employee service fees, computer hardware and software, maintenance agreements, and various insurance premiums. Mary Stanford provided a detailed explanation at our committee meeting Supporting information is included in our package, and Ms. Stanford is available to answer any questions that the board may have at this time. Based on the recommendation from the Finance and Personnel Committee, I move that the Board of Trustees approve Resolution 2013-1-2, Fiscal Year 2013 Professional Expenditures. OK, 
Okay, motion. Do we have a second, please? Second. Seconded by Janet. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Action item number five was office supplies. The purpose of this procurement is to award a two-year contract for office supplies used on a daily basis by the Greater Dayton RTA management and staff personnel. Bids were solicited for a core list of approximately 100 top items by dollars spent that RTA had purchased during the last 12 month, months and is likely to repurchase. The list contains frequently used items such as copy paper, toners, inks, mailing labels, and binders. Pricing was also obtained for all other office supplies that were non-core list items in the form of a fixed percentage discounts from list price. Uh, Deborah Howard and Frank Eckler provided a detailed explanation at our committee meeting, and the supporting information is included in the board package. Uh, Ms. Howard and Mr. Eckler are available to answer any questions the board may have at this time. And based on the recommendation from the Finance Personnel Committee, I move that the Board of Trustees award a contract to Salem Office Supplies for the purchase of office supplies in the amount not to exceed $50,000 for year one and $50,000 for year two for a total not to exceed amount of $100,000. Okay, have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Was it Edward? Second by Edward. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. The final action item I'm bringing forward concerns the ticket vending machines. These machines are provided in Greater Dayton RTA transit centers for the convenience of our customers. As part of the procurement process, site visits were performed by the evaluation team to view the machines in use and the related vendor facilities. It was determined that the proposal offered by GFI Gen Fair was the best suited for RTA. One of the other vendors did not have machines proposed in use, and their LED screen was too small, and the other vendor met the specifications, but their pricing was excessive. John Thomas provided a detailed explanation of our committee meeting, and the supporting information is included in your board package. And since Mr. Thomas has deserted us, Mark <laughs> will have to um, give us, answer any questions that we have today. Based on the uh, recommendations from the Finance and Personnel Committee, I move that the Board of Trustees award a contract to GFI Gen Fair, a division of XVX Corporation, for six ticket vending machines plus the necessary spare parts at a total cost of $370,353. And this procurement will be funded with 80% federal funds. Okay, a motion by Adrian. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Larry. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Action item six is approved. You have additional reports. Uh, uh, yeah, I'd make, like to make some comments on the financial statements we reviewed and the sales tax update. With the financial statement, Mr. Robert Thomas provided an update of the November 2012 financial statements. He reported that $236,000 we have saved through fuel hedging and sales tax revenue continues to be solid. Mr. Thomas also reported that the RTA realized a reduction of $17,000 in revenue due to the fair discounts we provided our customers during the 40th anniversary celebration in November. As to sales tax, the September 2012 sales tax update was distributed at our meeting, and the year-to-day sales tax income is still very positive news. It exceeds what we had projected. That concludes my report. Okay, any questions for Adrian? Okay, thank you. Uh, when I made a few brief comments at the beginning, and I mentioned the two committees, the Finance and Personnel, which just completed a report, and the second one, I believe I forgot to introduce the chair of that committee, Ms. Janet Jones. I also forgot to mention that besides the planning function, marketing also comes underneath the planning committee. So with that, uh, Janet, do you have a report on the planning committee for this month? Thank you. Uh, as stated earlier, the Finance, Personnel, and Planning Committees met on December 18th. Although we don't have any action items to bring forward, we do have a couple of updates to provide. Mr. Eckler introduced Tim Reynolds of Parsons Brinkerhoff, 
who is the project manager for the long-term, long-range financial and service planning strategy study that RTA has commissioned. Mr. Reynolds provided a project status update, including various kickoff meetings that have occurred and current data collection efforts that are underway. He also provided a summary of the project team that will be part of this important effort. It is estimated that this study will be completed by this spring. Mr. Eckler also highlighted the various benchmarking charts that will now be included in future board committee packets. He also provided a more detailed presentation of the benchmarking information, which will be at our future uh, board committee meetings. Uh, as far as marketing is concerned, Ms. Pritchard provided highlights of the December onboard newsletter, which included tributes to several retiring RTA operators and a behind-the-scenes article about the RTA call center. And that concludes my report, and we're available for any questions. Any questions for Janet? Okay, thank you, Janet. Mark, Executive Director's report. Thank you, Chief. Just a few items. Uh, I am really glad it's January because uh, no one's going to retire for a few weeks <laughs> around here. Uh, we have had a rush on retirements. As many of you know, there's a lot of changes coming in PERS. They're all effective this week. So uh, our employees are subject to PERS. So those who could really had to retire uh, by the end of December, and many, many of them did. So that's causing some internal issues. But, you know, it's good news if you're a young person on a seniority list, you know you're going to get a little better piece of work. Uh, but uh, if, a few challenges there, and some uh, one I'll mention later. I also want to tell you a little bit about, you know, coordination. I talk a lot about it uh, because I think it's a huge issue for us going forward. Allison and Sue Eason uh, hosted kind of a coordination summit for some entities within Montgomery County. And part of the study that Janet mentioned, uh, we have a subtask to kind of identify an experiment we can do. Uh, you know, it's hard to get people started in, in an effort like that. And our desire is to, to be the people who support starting something, even if it's on a small level within our county. Uh, so that was really a meeting to get to do that. We had about five or six uh, human service providers that showed up for the meeting, along with some national folks, a guy named Roland Ross, who is considered kind of the godfather of coordination. Uh, he's actually been around longer than me, if you can believe that, Alice. And so uh, yeah, he used to be with Federal Transit Administration, and he's really into this. So he was very helpful as well. ODOT came, which was good. And it's just a kickoff. We hope sometime this year we'll have a plan to present to the board to talk about our experiment with the, how we get coordination started. A few things we're, that are going on. We continue the search for John Thomas's replacement. Uh, he did call in sick, by the way, on Monday morning. He left me a voice message that, that he wouldn't be at work. Uh, that continues on. Uh, Gene and I will be working on that in, in the coming weeks. Uh, and as you are aware at this point, uh, in the interim, Jim's assumed responsibility for maintenance in addition to his regular duties. So we'll do a gray hair check on him over the next few weeks to see how that goes. But, uh, you know, I'm confident we'll get it done, but it, it's going to take a while. We want to make sure we make a good decision on the replacement for John. Uh, we've all been waiting for a resolution to our large union contract. We're still not there. Fact finding, we hope, will occur this month. Uh, but then it'll be several months, I would assume, before we'll see a report. So we're still a long ways from settling that issue, which is disappointing, as you know, uh, but hopefully we will get that done. Uh, trolley buses. A few people in the audience I know are really interested in trolley buses. Uh, Route 8 uh, will be back in trolley service next week. Uh, going back to all the retirements, I see the excitement on Michelle's face. She must have a Route 8 run. It's, uh, so uh, it's going to happen next week, but with all the retirements, we have a lot of young operators who are not terribly experienced on the trolleys. Uh, Jim's crew has been doing a lot of training to get them up to speed. We're going to ease our way in. We'll basically, what we'll do, skip blocks. We'll do every other bus. We'll be trolley, and then we'll alternate which ones each day so we get everybody up to speed before we release all the trolley buses back into service. Route 7 will be next. But it could take as long as to early February before it is ready to be back online. We've got some work in Kettering that we were going to do this weekend. Uh, and then we've got some other work down around Miami Valley Hospital that has to be finished before we can put seven back online. But they're both coming. So uh, it's long, long overdue. 
but thanks to all the hard work of our maintenance department, our line crew especially, it's been really fun watching, especially the detour projects go up and go into service. Uh, and as I told you last month, you know, John was determined that would be operational before he retired, uh, and he, he overachieved. I was thinking second week of December. Really, it was operational at Thanksgiving, so uh, he did a great job on that, and, and his folks did. We did that entire construction project with no job-related injuries, so we celebrated that with a cookout out at the line shop uh, because the fellas did a great job, and uh, if you just see what all goes on, uh, in that work. It's amazing. And as soon as they got that done, we had a snowstorm. And 10 o'clock one night, I'm out on Radio Road, and we lost a whole block of electric infrastructure. A tree fell through our wire and just pulled down a whole block's worth of poles and wire. And, and it was that super cold first night of the storm. And those guys were troopers. They were they had been there all day. And they were back out. That was the day of the cookout, actually. And they were they were back out that night at 10 o'clock. Uh, getting that road back open. So super, super job. Can't say enough, but uh, trolleys are back online. and We can hopefully spend a little less on diesel and, and, uh, and use a little more of our electric propulsion. And I have one last item. I just can't believe Michelle didn't speak up when she was near that microphone. Michelle's happy about more than just United Way. Michelle happens to have a son. He plays football for Mount Union University, the NCAA Division III national champion. Mount Union Entire University, program. so proud mom out there is super proud of her son. How about that? Right. Unless there are questions, that's all I have to report. I have a question. If you know, Michelle, Mount Union has won that championship for Division Three football many, many times. Do you have any idea how many? 11th national championship for that college. The HR newsletter. There's an article in that. You'll see. You'll see them in there. All right. Quite a program they've operated up over cool. the years. Being a football fan, I followed that a little bit down through the years. So. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for uh, Mark? Okay. Old business. I have none. Do you, Mark? Have any old business? I do not, other than Frank. But. <laughs> <laughs> New business, none. Public comments, I have none signed up to speak. Board member announcements. I don't, no. I don't have an announcement, but I want to add my thanks to what you did for United Way. Uh, I have been intimately involved in human services in Montgomery County. I chaired the campaign uh, in 2010 and chaired it uh, four years before that. And I know the need exists, the, the magnitude of the need that exists out there. Uh, when in 2010 we estimated we would have needed a five mil increase or raise $50 million additional dollars to cover the need for human services. But because of economic conditions, we chose not to ask people to pay more. So now we were short by that amount of money. In addition to that, with real estate values falling, and since uh, the human service levy is predicated on real estate values, the human services levy got even less money than, than uh, remaining even. So I want to thank United Way for their wonderful support because, as you know, all their dollars go to human services. It's truly needed. And please convey to all of your employees our sincere thanks for what you have done. And congratulations for all of your hard work and special appreciation to both of you. Any other comments from uh, board members? Okay, um, we could have a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Thank you very much.